The Black Ops 6 global launch rollout starts in just a few hours after publishing this video. So whether you're taking a vacation to New Zealand for the weekend, here it's beautiful this time of year, or you're waiting until a little later on in the evening for the PC launch, I wanted to conclude our pre-Black Ops 6 coverage here with our annual tips for launch, giving you a few heads up and pointers to get you started off on the right foot. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below. Are you going for prestige, camos, zombies, Easter eggs, and exploration, or anything else first? Let me know and make sure to drop a like if you enjoy the video or find it at all insightful. Lastly, things are about to get insanely crazy here the next few days, so I just want to take a final reminder and note, thank you guys truly for the support recently. The channel has been buzzing, and I cannot thank you guys enough for stopping by and checking out the content. Genuinely does mean the world to me, so if you'd like to join the community and join the road to 600,000 subscribers with us, perhaps you're part of that nearly 75% of viewers not subscribed, I'd truly love to have you in this community to keep you up to date with Black Ops 6 and other FPS content. But for now, one final thank you, but let's get into it. First, let's talk about some tips here to get in and tune your settings before you actually jump into the game. That's a big thing that come your first game in Black Ops 6. You're going to want to make sure that you have all this stuff right. If it's like recent years, a lot of your stuff, if not all of your settings, should transfer from what you had in the COD HQ, given it's all interconnected. But I'd always at least double check it because there have been times where some stuff doesn't pour it over properly. For your basic settings, things like sensitivity, FOV, motion blur disabling, camera shake to the lowest possible setting. A big one, make sure to remember to enable tax sprint assist with a sprint assist delay set to zero. That's your auto tax sprint in Black Ops 6. Not sure why they had to make it more convoluted, but you can adjust things like corner slice now apparently, which is going to be nice if you didn't like that. You can seemingly turn it off. And of course, all your other things that may be situational to you. We'll probably have a best settings video going live. I don't know within the first day here, but definitely within the first 48 hours or so, there's so much up on deck that I want to get done and YouTube only allows for three notifications per 24 hours. But anyways, one additional note when it comes to settings is the pay to win audio. Haven't been able to address this. The last two videos up on the channel were completed before the information about this came out. And I don't want to hijack an entire tips video or settings section to go into a breakdown, but having done a bit of research on it as much as I can without actually having it available to play around with since the game is not as of recording this, been seeing a lot of reports of what this is with people going full panic mode on this. And listen, I think it's stupid. I think it's dumb to try and make people pay for an upgraded setting. Audio should be good by base default. But I do think we're also missing some context of the in-game environmental use. The base default here of this is going to be universal. It's going to be for everybody. It's just the slight individualized tuning that is that upcharge. Again, I think it's kind of stupid to pay for that. But especially from what I've personally noticed from demos, because one thing you got to remember, the company that's doing this, the third party, did this for Cyberpunk a few months ago. Everything that I've seen up until this point, it more so makes things sound a bit more tinny or metallic, not as warm to the tone. And the most important part, the demos that I've seen, don't really do much in regards to like picking up more audio, but rather it's just the same audio and pivots it around from one ear to the other as if you're turning away from an audio source. And if you look at a lot of the reviews from the cyberpunk community, a lot of people are like, what does this actually do? I can't tell a difference at all. So until we have hands on with us here in Black Ops 6, I'm not going to worry too much. But frankly, from first glance, it kind of seems gimmicky. And I don't know how much will actually do. But OK, controversy aside here, back to the tips. If you've got any bonuses from certain promotions or retailers, make sure you have those redeemed. It would definitely be a shame if you have all these different receipts or different codes for XP tokens, but you don't actually have those redeemed. And then you jump into the game and you're a little behind schedule here. You can't activate those kind of things right away. Make sure you end up double checking on the status of all that kind of stuff so that when you come in and jump into game one, you're good to go. Let's talk about some gameplay tips here at this one. Firstly, when it comes to crafting your weapon and your loadout, there's a lot of things that you can use to your benefit here this year, more so than years prior. Number one, consider your playstyle when setting up your perks. Combat specialties are obviously something that rewards certain types of playstyles. There are bonus perks here that will benefit you in some areas rather than not. So like strategist, if you're somebody that likes to play the objective, you can end up taking those strategist perks and getting bonus score alongside that. Plus, if you mix it with the other perks to increase score yield, well, you're kind of breezing through your score streaks at that point. Enforcer, basically your run and gun that can help you out a ton. So just make sure you consider what type of play style you want to have going into a game and then build it out so you can maximize the benefit of what you have on offer. Next, consider and map out what weapons have specific weapon attachments you want in the optics category. Optics are shared across 
all weapons of certain classes. So all rifles share all optics in the rifle classification, all SMGs share all SMG optics, and so on and so forth. So your red dot on your SMG, if you unlock that, does not transfer over to your red dot for like the XM4 or the AK-74. You'll need to rank up each of those associated weapons of those classifications to get that red dot. So if there's anything in particular you want out of whatever optics there is, make sure you check out where you can end up picking those up so you can easily get to those first and then start equipping it to all your weapons. Next, utilize the new detailed stats to your advantage to check specifics on your weapon build's attributes. If you want to min-max something, this is the best way to do it. You can check right there as of building your weapon out to allow you to see specifics, not necessarily just those graphs that in the past haven't really been too accurate. So it's definitely something nice to have and to take advantage of. And finally, take a little bit of time in the firing range to either warm up your aim, learn the recoil pattern, or a little bit of both. The firing range this time around in Black Ops 6 has a bit more fleshed out to it. Still, not a whole ton in regards to anything beyond just those three lanes maps, but you have the now the moving target, the recoil plate, that stuff that definitely helps out. Of course, you also do have the training area where you can go and warm up and practice your Omni movement or your aim, whatever the case where that is going to offer a little bit more, where again, it's not necessarily just a firing range and that's a bit more fleshed out with targets and different environments you can play around with but no you can also enter that another thing to consider when it comes to crafting weapons on a more like larger scale and big picture thing consider your permanent unlock tokens and strategically use those for what you think will be best for you while there are not any with the launch of the game as like pre-order incentives that we've seen in the past if you plan on prestiging do keep in mind that you'll get a permanent unlock token every single prestige and that earned blueprints will also count towards those as well so while it doesn't give you a permanent unlock token if you say have one of the vault edition weapon blueprints or one of the blueprints from the campaign rewards that will permanently unlock that weapon so you don't have to use a permanent unlock token on any of those but early on try to plan out what you enjoy using the most and see if there's either an upcoming blueprint reward and the prestige rewards or something that maybe in the battle pass or in the shop down the line with season one and beyond depending on how close to that we get as the year progresses this is likely not as useful but for launch it's definitely gonna be something you want to take into consideration now as for some in-game tips first and foremost it sounds dumb but hit those shots Accuracy is way more important now in the launch than versus the beta. The headshot multiplier is going to be increased here. Plus, you also end up having headshots as a key component of your camo grind. So you want to make sure that you're progressing in both those aspects, both getting progress towards your camos, but also making sure that you secure your kills as well. So accuracy and hitting those shots is key, which also then refers back to, okay, you could try and practice around in the firing range or in the training area. Next, your camo grinding. A first thing to remember is that progress, attachments, levels, all of that, it will not reset after prestiging. You'll only have your weapons relock after prestiging. So play around with this and work towards what you want because eventually once you unlock it again, you're still exactly where you were, where you last left off. Next, another thing that I like to reiterate every single year because frankly, I gotta tell myself every year to remember this. If you're going for camos overall, launcher and melee challenges while they're not known right now for camos do them as you go along make sure you always have a launcher preferred i think and then a melee on your secondary while going for camo challenges historically launchers have been the most tedious so having them on your class from day one match one as you work your way towards others and other weapon camos just allows you to have any of those encounters you may come across you can be ready and get progress towards that whereas oppositely if you don't and you end up saving your launchers to the very end and it's the last thing you have, you're going to end up hating your life. I know because I've been there. Nice part with weapons being progressible in camos at any point, you don't have to worry about ranking up launchers and melees before you work towards camo progress. You can just naturally pick up from level one and again, your first match and start making progress. Next, take advantage of hardcore. Again, headshots are that prerequisite for most camo challenges this year. So hardcore is absolutely going to be an easier way to get some of those headshots done, at least in my opinion might be something that slows down the pace of play a little bit might become monotonous or tedious trying to get so many headshots but it does help next talking weaponry if warzone's your big thing we do have warzone season one and the black ops 6 integration happening at right now what looks like november 14th has not been officially confirmed but official marketing promos and stuff have gone out that have said november 14th so with that in mind that's only a few weeks so if you are somebody that wants to really grind out warzone when that time comes prioritize ranking up weapons and getting camo 
demos on what weapons you enjoy and what you think will do well. A lot of the times it's going to be your LMGs. A lot of the time it's going to be your marksman rifles, perhaps no battle rifles this year. So that's something that you can take into consideration. Some rifles are probably going to be good. SMGs, any standouts there? Those will probably be solid in Warzone. So just prioritize what you're liking and what you think will do well and work towards those first and foremost if Warzone's your main jam. And next, finally, party up if at all possible here. This is something that I've said plenty of times throughout the years. Solo play since Modern Warfare 2019 and the introduction of this ELO-based or engagement-based matchmaking system, it's really kind of been the death of solo play, I think, because if you're a high-level player, you're basically going to end up getting the 1v5 or 1v6 scenarios in gameplay situations. You're going to have to try and carry your team, but if you end up having a party of similarly skilled players, well, it kind of skews the matchmaking, and it makes it harder for that to really tilt it to, like, an even playing field, and a lot of the times, you can just brute force your way through a ton of lobbies and have a great time stomping everybody. Plus, who doesn't love just hanging out with your friends, chilling on Discord, and not having a care in the world? Plus, also more communication gives you more information and allows you to do better personally. So a lot of different factors that go into why I think you should play in a party, but if at all possible, try to party up. The last things I want to touch on here come down to, well, experience the rest of the game. Obviously, a lot of us are jumping into multiplayer first thing, but honestly, zombies can provide a much needed break from the grind for players. Like, listen, there's gonna be skill-based matchmaking. We know this going in. We know what we're getting into. You're gonna get matched up with a bunch of sweaty people, especially if you're jumping in and taking a vacation in New Zealand. That's where all the hardcore grinders are gonna be, man. You're gonna be the first ones in the world on the game, so it's gonna happen. But if you ever decide, hey, I don't really feel like doing this right now i don't really feel like sweating you're still going to be able to level up level your weapons your rank complete challenges all of that while also in zombies all just ai and a lot more chill it's quite possible that as of the last few years zombies might actually be one of the more efficient ways as well to rank up your weapons in black ops 6 but we won't know until a little later down the line during this weekend we're gonna have of course a lot of testing and stuff to get guides ready for you guys to give you that information firsthand but right now it's just a question mark one big thing here too is that for the first time ever you can save your game in zombies and come back to it which kind of sounds like an insane thing to get excited for but i mean we've never had that in zombies so absolutely that's pretty cool to be able to progress through something, grind it out, and then if you're like, ah, I'm going to take the night off or something, I'll pick it back up tomorrow, you absolutely can. And then, of course, to experience the rest of the game means campaign. I'd recommend playing. I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to be getting around to this one, but man, I am excited for the campaign. I loved what Raven did with Black Ops Cold War and that narrative, so very excited to see where that continues, how it continues, and where it fits in the overall universe of Black Ops, and how they bridge that gap a little further between Black Ops Cold War, the flashback missions of Black Ops 2, and then Black Ops 2 some 30 years after this game takes place. But the final thing that we'll leave you with here today is just the general launch window tip. While you may be very excited, don't forget to breathe, drink some water, don't lose sight on life. I know for a lot of people, that's an easy thing to remember, but honestly, sometimes you're grinding away so hard that you're like, holy crap, it's been two days. Maybe, maybe not. That might be an exaggeration, but enjoy it while you can, but also make sure to take care of yourself as well. For now, though, that is my tips here for launch ahead of it. Of course, we are going to have so many guides, tutorials, and all kinds of content coming through Black Ops 6 and the launch here and going into the year of support. So thank you guys again for the continued support leading up to this point. Very excited for what the year will bring ahead. But for now, that is where we're going to wrap it up. Let me know your thoughts down below. Is there anything you'd add to this list? Feel free to let me know. If you enjoyed the video, you found it at all insightful, do me a favor and drop a like on it. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding all things Black Ops 6 as we gear up for launch and beyond. For now, thanks so much for watching. Mata's been Espresso. I'll see you later. I'll see you out there in Black Ops 6. Take care and peace.